Welcome to HortTube, where we talk all things gardening. My name is Jim Putnam. Uh, this is episode three of my backyard plant propagation series. Today I'm gonna to be running an irrigation line from my main line of my irrigation system that's in my yard over to the uh, hoop house, which I have put about where it's gonna go for now. So I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna hook onto this main line and dig these pipes in and get it over there and the components that we use when we get to the house and how I install those. Here's a valve box that I have in my yard for my underground irrigation system. And if I open it up here, you can see inside that there are two valves in there and a lot of spiders, but the pipe comes in from this direction right here off of my main line. I'm gonna dig down in this area and hook on to it with a T and we're gonna run it across to where I have that spot in the sunlight over there is where I put the hoop house. I like to lay out the pipe on the ground about where it's gonna go. I'm gonna be using a couple 45s. So I marked the location of where the pipe was gonna go, made a little mark with my shovel. And now for the hard part, digging this line in. One issue I've actually run into here is I had run three different pipes. Um, you can see through those roots. I had run three different pipes through the same trench. So one of them is my main line, and that's, I've got to narrow it down, try to figure out which one it is. So I finally figured out which one it is. This is bottom one. I've cut it here, turned on the main line. It's definitely the one. The way I narrowed it down was the other ones had pipes branching off of them. When I found that, I kind of narrowed them down from that. So that main pipe in that trench definitely won't bend to allow me to put in this T. So I have this expandable coupler right here. It goes like that and then you just expand it into the spot. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and put our T onto this piece and we'll cut out a piece this width out of that main pipe and then we'll glue it in by spreading it out into the gap. It's pretty sweet. I always use, um, for those of you who haven't done PVC pipe before, I always use the cleaner, the purple, uh, the purple cleaner. There's a sheen on this pipe and inside these fittings and this cleaner takes that sheen off, makes a rough edge, so that when you use the glue, it holds together much better, it welds them together much better. I always use the blue glue, always use the cleaner, especially on the main line. I'm not as worried about it in the non-pressurized part inside the house, but definitely on the main line, we wanna do all we can to never have to dig it up and make any kind of major repairs on it. I got the expandable coupler in. I'm gonna put a 45 right about here, just kind of mark where I cut it, and I use these PVC cutters, if you have inch or smaller PVC pipe, these make uh, pretty quick work of them if you've never used them before. But it's just a ratchet. You just squeeze down on it here. And if you'll turn it back and forth a little bit, that'll get it started. And then you can see it just kind of quickly ratchets straight through the pipe. But again, I always use the uh, cleaner. This stuff will stain anything. Keep that in mind. I'll go ahead and do both sides of any coupler while I'm doing one. That dries really, really quickly. We can go ahead and get some glue on there, a little bit in there. I'm just gonna show you one of these. Uh, I'm gonna put that 45 on it and I give it a little twist like that and make sure the glue is spread out perfect. That won't ever come apart. That's, that is actually stronger than any part of this pipe. I'm actually gonna leave this valve on top of the ground here. Typically, I would have it buried under the ground, but I'm gonna be showing you several things with it throughout this series. So I'm gonna leave it up on top of the ground here. So I've raised my pipe with a couple elbows and I'm gonna run this here and then the pipe will enter the little hoop house right there. Make sure that the arrows on your valve are going in the correct direction. The water follows those arrows. I'm gonna put some Teflon tape uh, for these threaded pieces on my valve. I'm also gonna put this T in right about here and I'm gonna put a little cap, maybe six inches over here. I plan on expanding this at some point and I wanna just go ahead and allow for that in the future. I'll just be able to cut this cap off and run the water that way when I'm ready. And then I'm gonna put a T right inside the greenhouse right there. I'll leave enough room in between these fittings so 
but if we need to, we can cut them and still have room to attach another piece to in the future. Okay, I'm gonna put one more thing in between the valve and the house that I forgot to mention. That's gonna be the shutoff. And I'm actually gonna put this off to the side and, and I'm gonna use it in the future to drain the water out of this house. You should have something like this, no matter how big the house is, you should have some ability to open a valve and quickly empty all the lines so that you can make repairs or, but I'm mainly doing it for winterizing. It's still February when I'm doing this job, it's like 70 degrees a day, but it's still gonna get cold again at some point. And I'm just gonna be able to come out here, open this valve, drain this water out. Okay, I've decided to put four irrigation heads in this greenhouse and I'm gonna build a little U out of the one inch pipe coming around. I'm gonna put one head here, one here, and two behind me kind of in the same location. I've got this little coupler here has a threaded half inch piece on the top. I'm just gonna thread these in here. And I got one that's a little dead end for the end on each side. And I'll just screw those ends. I just have to cut the pieces of PVC to connect these together in here. One will go here at the end. I'm not worried about tightening these a whole lot. There's no pressure applied to this greenhouse except when the water's on and then it's not a lot of pressure because the water has a place to go out of the irrigation head so i'm not that concerned with any kind of pressure issues inside the house main pressure issues are always on your main line where water sits there all the time under pressure okay it's very important that these end up vertical we want to make sure that our irrigation heads are going to set up like this and just make sure that these are pretty straight, you know, eyeballing it. it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, perfect, but pretty close. The last step of this is putting these uprights in and they have to be perfectly level. All four of these irrigation heads have to be ex the exact same height. We're gonna keep water in here right at the top, ready to come on every single time. If we have one that's taller than another, the water's gonna drain out. It's gonna try to even out and it's gonna drain out of one. Then when it turns on, it's gonna require filling this one back up before water comes out of it. Water's gonna start coming out of this one immediately. So if that makes any sense, we really need these exactly perfectly level. So when it comes on, they all four start at one time. And when it goes off, they all four stop at the exact same time and don't drip, drip, drip in between. After I get this one in, the other ones, I'll base them on this one. They all need to be that exact same height. And what we'll do is I have my four foot level here. I'll just do this with it and make sure that this next one is the correct height. So I'll test fit it in there. And obviously that's gonna be way high. And come down, down, down. So you're gonna have to take quite a bit off of this. Okay, that's perfect. I know you can't see it. It's too way too bright in the spot because I have to have this thing in the sun for, for sure. But it's perfectly level there, okay? So I'm gonna put the one in here and we'll level it from here to here like that. Okay, we got it four level heads. Okay, I'm gonna give you a few pro tips here. Number one, never cover your line before you turn it on and pressurize it. Make sure you don't have any leaks. Number two, never turn the water on without the valves open, okay? We wanna open the manual valve. It's got a little hand control on there. We wanna make sure that's open. There's air in that pipe, and if we don't allow that air to come out, we can get a thing called water hammer where the water actually comes through that pipe and it just compresses that air down and just slams on it until it finds weak points in your pipe and causes big problems. So make sure that's opened up. And third thing is never put the irrigation heads on before we blow the pipe out. We got dirt and glue and rocks and all kinds of things. We wanna allow that to blow out of here before we put these on, otherwise they'll get stopped up. I'm, I kept the pressure down low on it to start with. And uh, there was a lot of brown water came out to start with. Hopefully we've got this cleared out. 
I'm gonna screw these on so you can get a look at how these are gonna look. I kind of need them facing toward the middle. There is a back to this thing that doesn't spray out as much. Since we got them right on the side, I need to make sure that back is gonna be toward the plastic. As you can see, we're gonna have good coverage. I got a little breeze coming in from the right that's preventing it from going all the way out to the right, but I think that's gonna be about the perfect coverage. This is only gonna to have to stay on two, three seconds tops to get everything covered in there each time. So just a little overview. I put that expansion coupler in there and that T, and we have a 45 running here. I've gotta get this pipe further down in the trench. The water that's in here is from just running it over here at the greenhouse. I'm gonna let that seep into the ground and then I'll get this trench covered. Then we put in our uh, spot so we can expand it later. I uh, didn't leave enough there, really. I'm gonna have to cut that very close to that cap when I do that, if I do that. Then we've got our electric valve in place. I've got a spot on the other side of that where we can drain the water out of here if it's gonna freeze. And then we've got our four uprights in the house that are all perfectly level and should come on and off at the exact same time. Okay, I think I'm gonna end episode three right here. We have water over to the house. Mist is working great. I think we're gonna have good coverage with the four heads. I have something up with that valve. It wouldn't turn on and off. That's why I was having to go over to the main. Instead of using the thumb screw on that, I may have a little pebble or something in there. I may end up having to cut that out. That's life and I have to cover this trench still and finish up here of nothing that needs to be videoed, I don't think. And next week we'll go ahead and put the clock in. Um, I don't really have time in this episode because it's fairly detailed. There's about 10 or 12 pages in the book for the clock to set it to seconds instead of minutes. So we'll do that next week, get the clock in and maybe go ahead and build the end walls. We still have to put the plastic on and the shade cloth and all of those things. And then we'll, we still need to get trays and soil mix components in place before we start on cutting. So there's a few more episodes here before we actually start on cuttings. I still actually need to put plastic and gravel in the bottom of it now that I have the uh, irrigation actually installed in place. So thank you very much for watching and if it was helpful please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for future videos. Also comment below with any questions you have about the project so far. Thanks a lot.